Hi everyone, Colleen here with YarnWars.com and today we are working the textured V-stitch dishcloth. This is by an unknown artist. So I don't really have a place to lead you to to give credit for this pattern. So many people have um, posted it is one of my favorite dishcloth patterns. Um, normally I like to knit my dishcloths. It's just they lay much nicer after a wash. Um, and I'm trying to find, or I've tried to find, um, a crochet dishcloth that will do the same for me. And I have found one that I absolutely love. So I do have the written pattern available on yarnwars.com, but it is not my pattern. So I am not taking credit for this. But um, the pattern is fairly simple. You just want to um, make sure you have a cotton yarn, sugar and cream, peaches and cream, um, whatever cotton you like to use. And for this, I'm going to use a multicolor. I'm pretty sure that's sugar and cream. But we're going to start with our slip knot. And the pattern tells us to chain 32. I am using a G hook for this. Twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, and thirty-two. I believe, and I hope I have thirty-two stitches there. Now, basically, you are completing a full, complete round after the first five rows of this. So, after five rows, you're just basically repeating rows two through five. So um, we start with our 32 chains and then working on our right side we're going to single crochet into our second chain from the hook. One and two. We're going to work a single crochet right into that second chain or second chain right there. We're going to chain one skip your next chain and we're going to work a single crochet into the next chain. Chain one, skip your next chain, work another single crochet into your next. And we're working the same pattern all the way down, skipping the next. And you want to make sure that you chain one in between each of your single crochets because that's making up for that chain or the stitch that we are skipping. Always the chain one after. Skipping your next single crochet and working a single crochet into the following. Now the foundation chain is always the most painful section to work. Once we get past this things will go a little quicker. But make sure you're not being extremely tight with your stitching because that's also going to make a difference in the difficulty of the pattern. You don't want it to be so loose that you're real loopy with it, but try to be relaxed when you crochet. There are certain things that I do work a little tighter, like the amigurumis and, or however that is said. I probably said it wrong. But other areas. You don't want to look like you're putting all your stress into your work. Skipping. And we're down to our last two. We'll chain one. Skip and work a single crochet into our last chain. Then we will chain one 
and turn our work. For row two, we are going to single crochet in our first single crochet and chain space. So we've got our first single crochet, we're going to work our single crochet into the first, and then we have our chain space from the previous row. We're going to work right into the chain space, not a stitch, but right into the chain space. And then in the next chain space, we're going to work the V-stitch. The V-stitch is very simple. You're going to work a double crochet. You're going to chain one and work another double crochet right into that chain space, the same one. And we've created a V. And then in our next, we're going to skip that single crochet. In our next chain space, we're going to work a single crochet. Skip our next single crochet and in the next chain space work the V-stitch. Double crochet, chain one, and another double crochet. Skip your next single crochet and in your next chain space work a single crochet. And you're going to work this all the way to the end of this row. Go ahead and pause your video, finish your row, and we'll be back for row three. Okay, we're coming in to the end of row two, and we've made our V-stitch. In our next chain space, we're gonna make our single crochet, and then we want a single crochet into our last single crochet. And this is what you will have at the end of round two. Next we're going to chain one. And on row three, after you turn, you're going to single crochet into your first two single crochets. So this one and this one, we're going to work a single crochet. One, two times. Then we are going to chain three, two, three, we're going to skip our V-stitch, which is right here, and we're going to work right into this single crochet, another single crochet. Chain three, skip our next V-stitch, and work a single crochet into the single crochet. And you're going to repeat this to the end of the row, skipping your next V-stitch, working into your single crochet, a single crochet. Go ahead and pause your video and I will meet you at the end. Okay, we're coming in to the end of row three and I've just worked my last chain three after my single crochet here. I'm going to skip my V-stitch and I'm going to single crochet into the last two single crochets. One and two. Chain one and turn my work. You're turning towards the left, towards you. Now on row four, we're going to single crochet into our first two single crochets. and we're going to work three long single crochets into our V-stitch. Now we're working into the V-stitch space, right into the middle here. And a long, crochet, or a long single crochet is just a regular single crochet, only we're working past this row under into our previous row. We're going to place our hook into that V-stitch space, pull up our yarn, so that it's even with the top and make our single crochet. So it's a long single crochet and we're going to do that three times into that middle V-stitch space. So we have three and then we're going to work a single crochet into our next single crochet. 
and this is going to be your pattern for row four, you're going to continue this all the way down. We have our next V stitch here. We're going to work three long single crochets into that V stitch, pulling that yarn up to meet the height of the rest of your single crochets. All right, and a single crochet into the next single crochet. So just continue that down the line until you get to the end of this row and I will meet you at the end of row four. Okay, we are at the end of row four. I've just worked my last three long single crochets into my last V stitch and then I'm going to work a single crochet into my last two single crochets. I'm going to chain one and turn my work. For row five, we are basically doing the same thing that we did for row two, or the first, I'm sorry, the first row that we did, row one. Is that row one? Okay, yeah. So we are going to single crochet into our first single crochet. And then we're going to chain one, skip our next single crochet, and then work a single crochet into our next. And then chain one, skip our next single crochet, and single crochet into our next. Chain one, skip and single crochet. Do that to the end. So basically our fifth round has, it's the same as our first round. We're going to work this to the end, chaining one after each one, remember, because you're skipping that stitch and you're making up for it with the chain. And like I told you, you're basically closing off the pattern with this last one or beginning it again with this last one. From here, <clears throat> all we're going to be doing, and we're going into our last single crochet, and chaining one. Now our row six is going to be repeating row two. Seven will repeat row three, eight will repeat row four, and nine will repeat row five and you're going to be working two through five. You're going to be repeating those rows for the rest of this. So at the end of five, this is what your pattern should look like. And you're just going to be growing it in these, in the same, with the same look from rows two through five. You will do this six more times, unless you want to make it larger or smaller and that will be about your average size dishcloth after six times of this. So go ahead and pause your video. Your next row you're going to be chaining one, which we did, turning, and then you're going to start in row two. So row two you're going to be working your v-stitches again and work row two, three, four, and five, and work that for the next, um, like I said, six times. But do not finish off after your sixth time or after you're finished working your pattern, do not finish off. I will meet you in a little bit to show you how to finish this off. Okay, now I have completed just a few rows here. 
I am running out of this yarn. So I guess I didn't have a complete skein on this, but I wanted to show you the finish off so that you know. Um, I ended my last row, I ended with row four with my V-stitches. And that gave me single crochets across the top as I have across the bottom. So I just ended mine on a row four. You can end it on a round five if you like. But at the end of this, what I'm going to do is I am going, I ended with my um, single crochet in my last stitch. And we're going to work a single crochet into each of our stitches around, working three single crochets into each corner. So we ended with a single crochet and I'm going to work one, two, coming around here. We had that single crochet in there, I'm adding two to that. And then we're going to single crochet into each of the spaces around. So we've got one, and then our next one here. And then into this. And we're just creating a border of single crochets. Mine will still work as a dishcloth, just a smaller. And it says here to work your single crochets divisible by three, so that was 15, I want to say, on that end. And then we got to our corner, we're going to work three single crochets, which brings us around. <clears throat> to the top of that. And then we're going to be working into each of our single crochets. So we're going to work into the chain space. That counts as one. And then we're going to work into our single crochet in each stitch around like that. Now I do have another way of finishing off this cloth and I didn't do that this time because it takes a little bit longer and because of the tutorial I didn't want to take up too much time. But if you'd like to see a different way to make a nicer foundation start on your dish cloth, <clears throat> it makes it look seamless across makes it look like the same from top to bottom. With the chain you always have that different look. I'm just going into each of these around. So just single crochet into each of your single crochets around. Remember to work three single crochets into each of your corners. And I will meet you when we get back around here, you're going to slip into your first single crochet. Just do a slip stitch and I will meet you when you get to that end. Okay, now we have created our single crochet border around our dishcloth. Remember that you want to work this divisible by three because that's going to lead into our second row of edging. And we've slipped into our first single crochet. Let's see if I can focus better here. All right, so we will start with a chain one. We'll single crochet into the same stitch. Chain one. 
and then we will decrease. So you're going into this stitch, pull through, go into your next stitch, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three for a decrease. And then you're going to chain one, single crochet into your next single crochet, chain one, and then work a decrease. Once you pull through, you'll have two strands on your hook. Go into your next stitch, pull through for three strands on your hook. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three and chain one. And this is the pattern you're going to repeat around. You'll single crochet, chain one, and then you're going to decrease. And then you'll chain one. Single crochet, chain one, decrease, chain one. Single crochet, chain one, decrease, and chain one. And continue working this pattern around until you get to the end. When you get to the end, you're going to join with a slip stitch to your first single crochet and then finish off by hiding your tail. We were also able, we were actually able to hide our tail on our round of single crochets here. On our next, our last row that we came around with single crochets, we were able to come up and hide that beginning tail up here, which I just need to clip off. So make sure you try to work that tail in where you can on that as well. So just continue this around, single crochet, chain one, decrease, chain one, and I will see you at the end. Okay, we've completed our border, the two rows of border that we have in our end, slip stitch to our beginning, and from here all you need to do is hide your tails. If you had one from the beginning chain, just hide that in, but it's real simple, just come through. What I do is I'll go through the next stitch in line, whichever direction my tail is heading, which is this way. And I'll go into that next stitch right down into the middle of it and push through the stitches. So it's actually going through and you can't see my needle on either side. It's going through the stitches. Just to kind of even that out with the rest of it. Which I didn't really do. But you're going to just kind of go in and out, weave in through your stitches until you feel like you have hidden that and it's secure enough in there through washes and all of that. I'm going to just end it right there. And we got that in there pretty tight. So we'll just clip that off close to our close to our dishcloth so that we can't see the tail. And this one we had hidden, like I said, we did this with our first round of the border. We were able to hide that up. <clears throat> so that is what we end with. It's such a pretty dishcloth. And the thing I love about this dishcloth is that each row is different. You're not working the same stitches over and over again, the same rows. And it works up really fast. Here's the other one that I made. I just love this pattern. So pretty. So choose whatever colors you want and we would love to see what you've made at our website. Um, you can visit us at yarnwars.com 
or stop by our group at www.facebook.com slash groups slash Yarn Wars. And feel free to share your work with us at Yarn Wars. And please subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.